What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta Healthier. After our last poll, it's clear that you guys want to see more on marketing. That makes sense because to get clients, you do have to be able to market yourself. I'll be telling you what you need to do to attract new clients. All you'll have to do is pull the trigger. Initially, I was going to title this video, Marketing Strategies for the New Year or something like that. But the more I thought about it, the less that made sense. You really should be marketing yourself damn near 100% of the time if you want to do this for a living. You might change up your approach a little bit at the start of a new year. We'll touch on that later. But if that's the only time you're doing marketing, you're doing it wrong. All I ask before we start breaking all this stuff down is that you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. This is the best way to support this channel, which is a free resource for all fitness professionals. Thank you for your support, everyone. This channel wouldn't exist without it. Today, I'll be going through six strategies that will help you market yourself as well as your services. To some extent, these strategies are in order, as in strategy one should be fully implemented before moving on to strategy two. That being said, all these strategies are important. Moving on to the first one, and that is to build a consistent consistent brand and image. How you go about this will vary a bit based on where you're working. That being said, whether you're self-employed or working in a typical big box gym, you still need a consistent brand and image. We'll talk about handling this in a standard gym setting first because that's where most of you guys are going to start out. If you're working for someone else, to some extent, you're a part of that other business's brand and image. You may have to wear a uniform and you may have to interact with clients and prospects in specific ways. That's all well and good, but to some extent, you still need your own brand and image when you're working for someone else. In a bigger gym setting, niching down is recommended and plays a part in this. Basically, the gym you're working at is most likely going to have a handful of trainers, and you'll need to have something unique about you that makes you stand out. Maybe you're really good at helping clients lose weight. Maybe you're the guy or girl who's really good at helping clients get stronger. Maybe you're the trainer who's really good at helping clients work with and around orthopedic injuries. Maybe you're the trainer who does well working with pregnant women. Obviously, there are tons more niches to choose from. It's really important for you to be proficient working with most, if not all types of clients, but you will likely benefit the most from being extra skilled at working with certain groups or demographics. So pick one or two types of clients and get really good at training them. If you're really good at helping people get stronger, eventually the word will get out and people will seek you out for that. Or at the very least, referrals will start to trickle in over time. More on referrals later. If you're running your own business, you'll still want to have a consistent brand and image. That being said, you'll have a bit more freedom with certain things. You'll almost certainly still want to appear professional, but of course, you'll have more say on what you wear and what you do. You still may want to niche down if you're running your business in a competitive area. My niche is high-end private personal training. The high-end and private components are still a bit of a niche, but I don't have to niche down any more than that because my private studio is in an area with low to moderate competition. If I were in a more competitive area like New York City, for instance, I would certainly have to niche down a lot more. Whether you're employed in a gym or you work on your own, people should know what you do, what makes your skill set unique, and they should know that you're a professional. Again, they should know all of this because you're consistently putting a specific brand and image of what you do forward for all to see. Okay, so now that we've established that you need a consistent brand and image, what do you do once you have that? My second strategy or step is to take advantage of all free marketing first. These days, most of this stuff has to do with social media. My studio has been around for about five years, and even though now we bring in some pretty decent cash, a few hundred thousand dollars a year, we still rely upon free marketing more than anything else. There are several layers to this. First off, you should have Facebook, Instagram, and all other free social pages for your brand. If you're working in a gym or for a different brand, you might want to keep all these pages personal or just use your name. If you run your own business, make all these pages the name of your business. You'll want to post content on all these pages regularly, and that content should all be designed to speak to your ideal client. Who's your ideal client? Well, you should have figured that out in step or strategy one. Having an ideal client is part of having a clear brand and image after all. If I'm trying to attract middle-aged women who are trying to lose weight, I might post things like this on my Facebook and Instagram, as well as other pages like LinkedIn on a regular basis. Something simple like this post that we created grabs people's attention and keeps them engaged for a short period of time. We encounter many female prospects who are scared of getting bulky, but as we can see here, muscle mass doesn't take up much space unless we're adding a ton of it to someone's frame. This is a good visual reminder for our ideal client. We also post regularly in local free Facebook groups like this one called Southington Talks. This post will be reached by up to just over 32 thousand people. That's a lot of reach for no extra cash. On Instagram, you're going to want to add both a location and hashtags to all of your posts. If you work in a gym, tag your location as the gym. You can also set it as a location you service. As far as hashtags, tag your local area, gyms, and anything related to your ideal client. I need to be consistent on posting and growing my community because things like this will likely pay off in the long run. The second part of taking advantage of free options first is different enough to be its own step and strategy. In this strategy, 
is to be your own brand ambassador. Whether you work in a gym as an employee or if you work for yourself, you are your own brand ambassador whether you want to be or not. You should focus on introducing yourself to new people as often as possible. You should also tell these people what you do when it's appropriate. If you work in a typical gym, this is a pretty straightforward process. Given the opportunity to introduce yourself to members, do so. Don't be obnoxious and walk up to random members and ask them if they want training. That's not going to work. You're better off just starting up random conversations with members and telling them what you do. If you see someone using a certain kind of pre-workout and you're curious about it, ask them about it. Just don't forget to introduce yourself somewhere in that introduction. If you see someone doing an exercise wrong, ask them if they've ever tried doing the movement like this. Obviously, you're showing them the right way to do it, but be gentle with something like this as you can come off as arrogant if you're not careful in that last scenario. One thing that honestly works if you do it often enough is just to introduce yourself to people as you're walking by them. Don't be too in your face about it. If someone clearly wants to be left alone, leave them alone. If they're not giving off that leave me alone vibe though, maybe as you're passing by, say a group of two friends working out together, you could say something like, how are you guys? My name is Jeff and I'm one of the trainers working the floor today. If you have any questions on anything, be sure to let me know. If they do need something or have a question on an exercise or where a piece of equipment is, they're going to ask the person who they know, which is now you. If you do stuff like this often enough, you will gain clients over time. The key, just like with almost anything, is consistency. You have to be doing stuff like this very often. Now, if you work for yourself, there's a good chance that you won't have a gym floor to take advantage of. You'll have to get a little more creative with how you meet prospects. Go to local businesses, introduce yourself, and tell people what you do. It's best if you do this somewhat organically, like when you go to the local smoothie shop in town. Go there with the intent to buy something and introduce yourself in the process. Make sure you always have business cards on you for situations like this. In fact, you'll want to leave your business cards in any local spot where your ideal client is likely to hang out. Grocery store bulletin boards are good. Leaving some cards with hairdressers or in salons also works. The list goes on. It's always a really good idea to network with local massage therapists, chiropractors, dietitians, physical therapists, and other professionals as well. This is one of the best ways to get clients working as an independent trainer. That being said, everything I just mentioned can also be taken advantage of by trainers working in gyms as well. It's just more essential if you work on your own because you have less ways to meet potential prospects. You can also take advantage of local events and local chambers of commerce. I would only focus on these types of things if you work for yourself or your employer is willing to pay you to attend though. One thing that should always be a source of new leads and clients is referrals. And acquiring referrals from clients is my next strategy. About 20% of my clients were referred from other clients. This 20% number is likely to be even higher for most successful trainers. I happen to have a strong local presence on Google, which helps me to acquire most of my leads. And that makes it seem like referrals don't matter as much, but they still matter a lot, even in my business. The main way that you get your current clients to refer you more clients is just to over-deliver on everything that you do. If you can help your client to achieve their goals and you're able to build a connection with them, you're likely to get referrals from them at some point. I do think giving your clients small rewards and incentives can help a small amount with getting referrals, but probably not in the way you're thinking. I do give my client a free session whenever they refer me someone who signs up for a package. That being said, most of my clients could care less about a free session from a monetary sense. They're certainly not referring me anyone to get that free session. They're referring that person to me because they like what I do and they think their friend or family member could also benefit from my services. This is still a very kind gesture and I do want my client to know how much that referral means to me. After being referred a client from an existing client, I'll say something like, I really appreciate you referring blank to me. That kind of thing helps a lot when it comes to growing my business. I know it's not too much, but I want to give you a free session as a sign of my appreciation. Thanks again. Like we said before, the free session doesn't mean too much for you or for your client in the grand scheme of things. All of what just transpired though is helpful in building a deeper connection with your client and potentially getting you more referrals in the future. Your best clients will want to help you just like you've helped them. You need to handle these types of interactions the right way. I also think it's a good thing to get your best clients small gifts from time to time. Show them some appreciation. They literally keep you employed. I've been known to get my clients gift cards to local businesses, which clients and other local business owners both appreciate. Don't go crazy here, 10 to $15 per card is plenty. Your clients just need to feel appreciated. This kind of gesture definitely does help a little bit with retention and getting referrals too. My next strategy is more of a thing you shouldn't do rather than something you should do. You shouldn't almost ever do large discounts on your services. I've never done a large discount on my training services and I think it's one of the few things I've gotten right 
running a training business since day one. Running discounts on your services cheapens what you do and lowers your overall perceived value. Let's say that I'm a client who's been training with you for about three months and my package of sessions is about to come to an end. I see that you were running a sale a few months ago and you signed on a few new clients because of that sale. Obviously I, your client of three months, am going to want that same sale price that you were just offering. If you don't give me that sale price, you look like a dick and I'm probably not going to resign with you. This is just one of the many reasons to never offer large discounts on your training services. It can easily spiral out of control and hurt you far more than it helps you. This video is coming out in the beginning of December 2021 and I'm sure many of you are feeling some pressure to offer some holiday sales. Like we just said though, big sales and personal training will hurt you more than they help you. Is there anything that you can do sales wise to capitalize on the holiday season or any other sales season for that matter? There are really only one or two things worth trying. Before we talk about that though, let's be clear. If you're already well established and you have a whole bunch of clients, then I think you're best off not doing any special sales or discounts. The only discounts I offer at this point in time are 5% off packages for students and first responders. That's not really meant to be a discount as much as it is a high five to people doing important things. I don't offer any deals other than that. My price is my price. Early into running my own training business, I ran two promotions and both gave me mixed but decent responses. The first one I tried was a 5% discount on my training packages. Basically, I just told people for the week after Black Friday, we were offering 5% off any of our packages, which resulted in potentially hundreds of dollars in savings. This did get me one or two clients after some work on spreading the word, but I think it attracted cheaper people overall, which isn't great, and it also wasn't great for my brand image. I never ran an advertisement like that again after my first year. In our second year in business, we offered a three session deal for $60. Now this sounds like a steal, but when you break it down, it's not that crazy of a deal, still good, but not crazy. You're most likely doing your initial consultation for free already. That's the first session. The next session will usually be an assessment with any leftover time spent working out or goal setting. And the third session is an actual session. Since your initial session, the consultation is already a free session, technically you're only giving away one session for free. Many potential customers don't catch on to this. And even if they did, one, this is still a good deal. And two, you're not being shady. You are offering three sessions for $60 or a different stated amount. Offering a small incentive like this early into starting your own business can possibly be beneficial if you only do it once in a while. If you're already an established trainer or business owner, don't run sales or promotions. That's advice that I live by. My last step or strategy is to use paid options last. A possible exception to this would be the creation of a website. If you work for yourself and you do in-person training, you should create a business website. I've created several websites using Wix and it's just easy drag and drop. Beyond that website, the only online marketing that's worth looking at for personal trainers for most of you at least, is gonna be Google and Facebook. Google is much trickier and more expensive, so we're not going to be talking about that today. But Facebook marketing is worth looking into if you're an established trainer and business owner who's already got a bit of a following. Here's an ad that I had shot in my studio last week for Facebook, and it only cost me a few hundred bucks. You don't even have to have a video like that. You can just have some captions and pictures. The key is to hook someone's attention fast and show what you do. And if you can show what makes your services unique or different, that's great too. Facebook ads are very easy to set up. You can run them for a few bucks a day and you can even decide who sees those ads based on location, age, gender, interests. It's highly effective and even a little bit creepy to be honest. All of this being said, I wouldn't bother with any paid advertising at all until you're running your own business and you've already established yourself a bit locally. And that, my friends, is all that we have for today. We talked about a lot of important things in this video, but there are endless things that we could talk about when it comes to marketing. If anyone has any questions, be sure to ask those down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because both of those things do help the channel to grow, which does allow me to create more free content for all of you. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, stay sort of healthy.